Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. Today, because I received a bunch of email requests, I'm going to show you most every other way to select elements using jQuery, and I'm also at the end going to provide an example that both introduces animation, event handling, and how to change values in elements. You can see right here, just basic line of code that I use here that I introduced in the last tutorial. If you didn't watch it, definitely watch it first, or this will be confusing. This is where we're getting our library. Right here, this is the line of code that's going to be called, and this is when everything's going to start executing in regards to our jQuery statements. Just as soon as the document says that it is ready and functioning and ready for that. The rest of this is all straight HTML code. There's a whole bunch of divs with an H4 tag, a couple paragraphs, a span, and then a closing div. And then at the end here we have another span and we have an input button. So I'm going to come in here and show you pretty much every single other way to select different things inside of jQuery. So how do we call jQuery with a dollar sign? And let's say I want to be able to get access to the first H4 tag on the screen. How exactly do I do that? Well, I'm going to change its CSS styling. And I also received a request or a comment asking how to change multiple CSS stylings at one time. I'm going to actually show you that. But here I'm going to grab the first H4 tag and I'm going to color the background color yellow. And you can see it just did that. That's what it did. So that's how you use first. And you can also come in here and type in last. And let's say I want to color the last paragraph. And like I said before, I'm going to show you how to change multiple CSS styles. You just want to come in here, put a curly brace inside of there, and then put a colon. And just so this makes a little bit more sense, I'm going to color this purple. And this, by the way, is the paragraph we're aiming for. So I put a colon in, instead of a comma. Now I put a comma. Now I'm going to change the text color, put a colon inside of there to white, and then close that off with a curly brace. And that allows us to change multiple different styles at one time. And there it did. It copied that, went and changed the text color, and changed the background color. And of course, I showed you in the last tutorial how to add and remove classes and stylings and so forth. And of course you could do that instead. That's a little less messy. Let's scroll this up. Okay, that's a little bit more room for us to work. So let's say that I want to target the first span child element of a paragraph tag. Let's come in here. And every time that I change my quotes, being that I have single quotes here and double quotes there, if I don't say anything about it, that means it doesn't really matter. Just sometimes I just randomly type in things in a different way. And I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to grab this guy. Save myself some time. I want to make sure I come in here, change that to a comma. And let's change this to orange. And this will allow me to target the first child span inside of a paragraph. Doink. And as you can see, it grabbed all of the first spans inside of all of the paragraphs. This is a paragraph, this is a paragraph, this is a paragraph, this is a paragraph, and this is a span. You can see that all the text that lies inside here describes exactly what's inside of those boxes. And I could also go and get the last child, and let's just copy this. And I promise these tutorials are going to get a lot more complicated and a lot more fun. It's just going to take me a while to get to that point because I'm just teaching you the basics right now. So let's say I want to target the last paragraph in divs. And let's change this color just so it stands out to cyan. That's how I would do it. And that's exactly what it did. It targeted the very last paragraph in the div. And the, the div surrounds all of this stuff right here. So that's a div. I can also target the nth child, meaning I can define exactly the child that I want to be able to grab. Just copy that again. Let's say div here. Let's get rid of this guy. And let's say nth, N-T-H, child. And let's just say one. So this is going to be the first child of the div. And let's just change this to pink. And you can see it got them. Grab these children elements and change them to pink. You can see here that I changed this to two and it grabbed the second one on the screen. And if I change this to three, I think you can guess it grabbed this guy right down here. Well, let's just change this back to one. Just a way to show you some different things and how they change as you change the numbers. I'm gonna copy and paste that again. Now these are zero based, what I'm gonna show you next. That means the first element is actually gonna be referred to as zero. The second element's gonna be referred to as one. The, sec the third element's gonna be referred to as two. If you know anything about programming languages, that should make sense. So let's say when I get a span, type in E, Q, and let's just change this to two. And let's give this a color of purple so that, that stands out. And you can see that it did indeed target the second span if 
This is the zero, and then this is the one, and this is the second. Remember, those are zero based. So that, in essence, grabs for you the third span on the screen and allows you to edit it. You can also target, in this situation, I'm going to target all H4 tags after the first index. So how do I do that? I type in H4. That's the tag I want to zero in on. GT greater than, you can think of that, one. And then let's change this to green and it grabbed this guy right here. Now what would happen if I change this to zero? It grabs them both. See, this is pretty much every single way you can grab different things. You just need to think about it a little bit and figure out exactly what you want to target whenever you're using these rules. But when it comes down to it, you can pretty much grab anything you could want. I'm going to change this to two, and then I'm going to change this to an ugly color. Let's make it olive. And now this is olive and this is olive. And of course, as these CSS stylings change, the last one overrides any of the ones that proceed it. Now what I'm going to do is down here you can see it says click to hide me. I'm going to add an event handler to this guy that's going to trigger it to hide whenever it is clicked on. And you can add event handlers to pretty much anything. So the ID for this is click to hide me. So how do we target IDs with a hash symbol? Click to hide and then put my quotes inside of there. And this is how we're going to add a click event handler to that. And what we're going to do with it was we're going to call a function, an anonymous function. It's anonymous. Why? Talked about this last time because it doesn't have a name. That's all. Not that complicated. And what we're going to say is that we want this guy with the ID click to hide to hide itself when it's clicked. So how do we do that? We call the hide function. And of course we want to use the same types of quotes. And this is the hide function. Come in here, curly braces, and close off that anonymous function. And if we save that and reload it, if you click this, it's going to hide itself. Well, we can click on the bring me back button, but that doesn't mean it's all it's going to automatically work without us creating some functions and events that we're going to hook into that. Here I'm going to show you some neat animations as well. We're going to go, and just so you know what I mean when I say ID, see, button, ID, bring it back. Here, ID, click to hide. That's what I'm talking about. When you want to reference one of those, you have to start it off with a hash symbol. Real simple. Bring it back. So that's the name of the button, the ID for the button. And I'm just going to add another click event handler to it. Put another anonymous function inside of here. And I'm just doing that because I'm not going to call this function for anything else. So why give it a name? And that's kind of mean, isn't it? And then here I'm referencing the text called click to hide. Here I'm showing you a couple other things. I'm asking is inside of this if statement, it is visible. And then if it is what we want to do, is coming down inside of here and saying OK, click to hide. We want to hide it. This guy's actually going to do double duty for us. Else, if it is invisible, we want to run another function on it. And just so you know, the opposite of is is not. Okay? But we don't want to do that. So if you wanted to check if it was not visible, you would do that. All right. Let's scroll this up so we can actually see it. So if it's not visible, what we want to do is make it visible. And how do we make something visible that isn't? We call the show function. See, jQuery has very easy to understand functions. And we want to close that off. And then we want to not forget to close off our anonymous function. And that is exactly how that's done. File save it. Now, if I click on this text that's down here, let me zoom in just so you can see. See, went away, bring it back. Hide, bring it back. But wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense because this button says bring it back whenever it's already there. Well, that's stupid. Okay, well now I'm going to show you how to change the value of this button. Let's just jump right back up inside of here and let's change this. Now the button click caused us to get here so we can refer to the button now as this. This is a reference to whatever element called this function. So to have this function called, the only way to do that is to click on a button. Hence, you can refer to the button thereafter as this. So whatever triggered this event to occur, you can refer to as this. It's just shorthand, but it is something nice to know. And here we're going to use the val function to say bring back on the button. And that's all we need to do. We can actually copy this, jump down here, leave this, leave val, except that's going to be delete text. And we file save that, reload it. And then you can see if I click make it delete, it says bring back, but now it says delete text. See, back and forth, and you're thinking, oh, that's not very impressive. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you how to do is to show you some neat little animations that are extremely easy to use with jQuery. Now, instead of just quickly hiding or deleting these guys, instead of hide, 
I'm gonna say fade out, and let's say I wanna put 2000 in there. And then instead of show, I'm gonna type in fade in. Just those little tiny little, little, little changes provide with a nice animation. Jump over, reload, and here it is. We click on it, now bring back. Oh, look at that, see? Came back really, really, really nice. Delete text, and it actually fades away really, really nice. Comes back and forth, pretty sharp. Neat little thing we can do. And I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of other animations that are available to you, so they'll be really neat thing to look forward to. And you can also type in slow, you could also type in fast, you could also type in normal instead of typing 2000 in here. So there is a couple neat little things and a couple things you can look forward to in regards to adding events, which I'm going to cover in the next tutorial, and adding animations and all kinds of other things. And believe me, the other animations are much more impressive than what you just saw right there. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. All the code is at newthinktank.com, and otherwise, till next time.